Hey everybody, Patrick McFadden here. I am here to talk to you a little bit about a really cool demo. It's just a, a real easy example for connecting Java and Java app into Astro, which is DataSax Cassandra as a service. You'll find it's pretty simple, but I'm gonna walk you through the process. Now, this particular, uh, this particular example you'll see right here in front of you, you can go to this repo. It's the getting started with Astro Java and in, uh, in this particular case, there's two of them. There's actually a Java component, and then you'll see that there's also a UI component as well. Now, the back end being microservices is all Java, because that's the way it should be. And then the front end is Node.js, also the way it should be. And so there's these two work together. So we're gonna need both of these. And as you do to get started with anything like this, if you go ahead and you do the, uh, Git clone. Now I've just done this with both of my projects. So I got the uh, back end and I got the front end. So I'm going to walk through what the application does. Um, I'll just do it and then we'll get over to the code after we're done just so you can see how it all glues together. This should be a nice quick way of an overview, but really as, as anything goes, this is something you should go do with your own hands. You should go out there and try it, um, give it a shot, and you'll learn a lot with it. Now, because this is using Astra as a backend, we'll go ahead and use Datastacks Astra. Um, if you're not uh, familiar with that, astra.datastacks.com. And this is our Cassandra as a service, as a backend. So it's all Cassandra without your hassle. And that is cool. You don't have to download Cassandra to make this work. So I'm gonna log into my account here. And when I log in, I'm given the option to create a new database. Now, because Astra, um, is really, it has different tiers, but really what we're doing for is for learning right now. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna create a new database on the free tier. Now you can use a free tier, it's free to, for you forever. Um, when you use it, you can just use it as long as you want. It will park it after a while, um, but you can always revive it. So think of this as like a great place for you to do your testing and playing around with Cassandra that you don't have to install anything and it's always up to date and somebody else has to run it, which is the best part of this. Now, so I'm gonna create a real quick database here. Um, I'm gonna create this in US East one and I'm gonna give it a name. Uh, let's call it getting started. And same with the key space name. And the database, the, the database username will be me in this case. Should you spell it correctly? And my password in, <laughs> it's gonna be a terrible password. I'm gonna tell everyone it's password. And Dashlane is really trying to save me right now. And sorry, Dashlane, you're not gonna save me from my terrible password. Um, I should create a better password, but I forget what these are for these demos. So let's just, let's just roll with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch my database. So when I launch it, it's gonna let me see what's happening. Uh, it's going through the activity of actually creating it on the back end. But let's, while it's doing that, let's go over and get our code ready. So inside of the project, we have a couple of things. Um, so let's go inside our getting started with Java. So if I look inside this project, you'll see that it's Pretty simple Java project. And of course, this is all Mavenized. So we're gonna use Maven for everything. And if you've never typed uh, the word Maven before, do it now because it's gonna to have to download half of the internet. You know how Maven works. It's not as bad as SBT, I don't think, but you're gonna to have to download half of the internet to make this work to start with. Um, it's just how Maven works. But once you get Maven going, you can do a Maven, uh, we can start it up using a, a Maven command and we don't need to have a database yet. And that's the key here. This pro the way this project is set up is it will, in the process of running it, connect to the database. And you'll see in a little bit how that works. Now with the Spring Boot run, what it's gonna do is it's gonna build the project and actually start running it. And this is what we want. It's gonna be the, the backend will be fired up. It goes through all its stuff. Nice little ASCII graphic with Astra going. But what it's doing is it's getting everything ready for the front end and the back end to communicate. Now we could do the same over here. Um, let's go into getting started in the UI. 
Now this one um, is because it's a node application, we're gonna be doing something a little differently in this case. Now, because this is a node program, and if you're a Java programmer and don't know anything about it, we have all the instructions right here on the UI. So um, some of the things you're gonna need for both of these um, is you're gonna have the current version of Java, but also you're gonna have to have Node.js installed. The, prere the prerequisite is Node uh, version 8.1, and that's something if you're using a Mac, this is where Brew is your best friend. You know, brew install node, node.js, and you are in a good place. Um, that's what I use, and I use brew install npm to get my npm up to speed. Um, brew install npm, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, will install everything you need. But if you're on a Mac, this is really, uh, if, and you're not using homebrew, then you should really use homebrew. Um, that's how I get my whole environment set up. Now, because uh, this is running node, we're gonna do an npm install and then an npm run start. So let's go back over and we'll run that. And it has to download a few things, just like I said. And let's check on our Java program. Our Java program sitting over here running. Uh, it took a while to run. Now, let me, let me stop this real quick and let me show you one thing you should check on is you should definitely check to see what version you're on. So I'm running uh, JDK 14, and that the minimum version is 11 for this. And if you're not, if you're running a Mac, you're probably going to run um, the old school 1.8, and that's not going to work. That does not have the right tools and everything, all the API calls that it needs. So again, this is where I use Homebrew to do my installs. Um, this is the most up-to-date version of Java that's out there. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, go ahead and Spring Root run again. Get it running, have it running. Let's check on our NPM over here. Oh, it's downloading the internet. So we'll let that happen. And while it's doing that, let's go check on our database. All right, so it's still installing the database or initializing the database. We're gonna let that finish. It usually takes about anywhere from five, 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, but we're gonna let this go. It does say as long as 30 minutes, but I don't think it's gonna take that long. So we're gonna take a break and then we're gonna come right back to this. And here's our database now, awesome. Okay, so when it starts up, you get a bunch of really good information about connecting, and this is really what you wanna do. You don't want a database just sitting there, do you? Of course not, you wanna use it. And to use it, there's a few ways. Um, some of these are a distraction for today, but are really cool. Like there is a REST endpoint and a GraphQL endpoint um, that's built into Astra. You can just use Astra directly with your API calls. You don't even need to install Java or Spring or anything else to make those connections, you can just go directly to the database. But that's not where we're talking about today. Um, because you're one of those people who wanna build your own microservice layer and that's awesome. So how do you do that? Well, you're gonna to have to do a couple of things. First of all, by creating the database, we have a username and we have a password, not visible because we know what it is. It was password. And in this case, um, you know, not being very secure, I'm always gonna remember it and now so are you. Um, and whenever we um, create the database, we also get a uh, secure connection bundle with it. And this is really the key to making this work. Um, a se secure connection bundle has a bunch of information, including keys to connect to the database in a secure way. Uh, because this isn't um, glued into one particular cloud and works in on-prem or off-prem or wherever you are in the world, you have to use this connection bundle. So to get it, just simply click on it It'll download that thing into onto your local box. So downloading the secure connect bundle is a really important part of this. Now inside that zip file is a bunch of really important information. Um, we will look at it a little later, but once it's on my local computer, that's, that's super important. And we'll get to that in a minute of how we actually integrate that in. Um, it has all the information we need from the, from the Java side to make the connection to Astra on the back end. But let's see how things are going here. Now, what we've already done so far is we've uh, we've gotten the Java program running. Cool. So let's get this going again. And whenever we start it, this is going to start the back end. But let's get to the front end. What's going on over here? Well, the front end needs a couple of things. So if you look at the instructions, uh, not only do we have to uh, run Node, 
But then there's this thing in here about we need to have this put into an MV, EMV file. Base address is localhost and 5000. But if you look at the directions over here on the Java side, it's actually going to look for a different version. Now, um, or I'm, I'm sorry, it's going to be looking for a different port. So in the setup inter, uh, documentation here, it's saying, no, 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 you want a base address of this. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. And that's happening over here in your UI directory. So if I'm going to do this, I'm just going to use VI. And I'm going to make that real quick. And so what this does is it sets up an environment variable saying base address is where, where to find the base address. So um, I'm going to quit out of this. Now I can go over here and follow, continue to just, um, all, all the instructions where I have a base address set. I've done my install. Now I just need to do an npm run start. And let's see how that looks. So when I start that, it's see how it pulled out my, um, it's pulling out my node environment, great. And it's running a front end and localhost 3000. So let's go take a look at that. Now I've already typed that in earlier, but of course it bombed out on me. So now when I, when I go to that, you get this UI. And the first thing that asks, um, and the first thing that it asks you for is, hey, what about this database I need to connect to? Awesome, we're on our way. Um, so I'm gonna put in my username, which is me, and Dashlane is gonna be like, are you sure you wanna do this? Go away, Dashlane, because I used a terrible password. Does everyone remember what it was? Password you entered is very weak. Yes, I know, thank you, Dashlane. And then the key space, of course, if you remember, that was getting started. And here's where we're gonna to have to bring in our secure bundle. Now, I'm gonna drag that over from another screen and just drop it in here. Cool. Next thing I'm gonna try out is testing the connection. Now, with the secure bundle and all this information, it should connect right up to the database. Test successful, awesome. So now at this point, we have our UI connected to our backend. It's connected to Astro, the database. I can hit save and we are off to the races. So what it's gonna do at this point is, is set up the situation where we can dump data into our Astro database. And to do that, we say launch new journey. And my spacecraft name is what? Let's give a really good one. Um, like, a, I don't wanna say uh, Voyager. Hmm. There we go. And the journey summary. Out and about, because we're just going to do a quick pass. And when you launch it, it goes through and the UI actually has this really cool like Starfield simulation. And it's rating and writing data into Astra. Of course, that's what this does. But it's a good demonstration of how to connect things. This is not about this. I don't think you need a Starfield simulator. Although if you put this on your desktop, I'm sure everybody would be like, wow, man, what is that? This is my Starship simulator running on Datastax Astra. I wrote it. You can tell them that. Um, but it, really what it's here for is you know, learning how to connect to Astra, how to work with Cassandra, et cetera. So we finished our journey. It wrote a few thousand rows or a thousand rows, read a thousand rows. Um, great simulation. Okay, at this point, let's see how this thing works. Now, as I mentioned, this is a Java program that's running on Spring. So what do you get when you have a Java program running Spring? That's right, Swagger. And you probably already saw this tab. So what's going on here? Well, this is running on my local host, port 8080, but this is a place where you can actually explore the APIs, see what's going on. Like the credentials controller, instruments controller, spacecraft controller. Instruments controller has get some posts. Um, this is a good place to play around. And like any other uh, microservice, you can see what's actually being put in uh, the gets and puts that you're doing on your database. And because we're using Swagger, you get to play around with it and actually try some stuff out and get some example values back. Now, in this particular case, this is actually connected to Aster on the back end. If I was to look at Aster right now, which I can, um, I can go see that there's data in there. So let's look at what's actually happening on the back end. Now, I, I promised that I would give you a little peek under the covers to see what's going on. And this is what I want you to look at as well, is not just running it and getting that really super cool Starfield simulation, woo, but learn a little bit about how you can connect your Java program 
to Astra. And as I mentioned, it is very simple in a lot of ways because there's a lot of, um, of stuff that's done for you. The Secure Connect bundle is a gateway to getting this done quickly, but let's learn how to use it. In the documentation, there's this discussion about the session manager. And like I said, this is where the real magic is. And this, this session manager has a few things that it does, and we'll go look at the code here in a minute. But if you're creating a new um, CQL session, and in that, you're doing with a Cloud Secure Connect bundle. And so what you're saying is, I like to create, like if you were using Cassandra, like on your laptop, you would connect to an IP address, put in a username and password, etc. But in this case, what you're saying is, no, 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 I'm gonna connect to Astra, so here's my secure connection bundle zip file, figure it out from there. And that has all the certificates, the security, it sets up TLS, all that good stuff. And then you can put in your username and password and set the key space and you're done. Now, if I was to look at the actual code itself, this is the key part right here, this connect to Astra. And when you're when this is running, this assumes that from the UI, you've gone through the, the whole process of putting in a username and password and uploading that secure connect bundle. But once it's in there, you see it's, this is how simple it is. And it connects, it makes a, a new CQL session using that uh, connect bundle, the username and password and the key space that you put into the UI, does a build and at that point it's done. And it creates the needed uh, schema if needed. And from there, you're just in that mode of like being able to dump data in and out of the system. Very simple. Now, if you're writing your application, this is something that, this is some boilerplate. You can almost copy and paste this because this is how you connect to Cassandra running in Astra. Now, I mentioned the Secure Connect bundle earlier. Um, let's take a look at what was actually in there. So I actually exploded that thing so you could see what's going on. Now, in there, there's a lot going on that probably you don't even care about, but there's something, it's just kind of an interesting thing. So you trust that this is what's happening. I like to do this kind of stuff. I like blowing up my zip files and see what's inside of it. Well, here's this endpoint that I'm sure no one was gonna ever remember because this is a UUID, hello random 120 bit number, um, but it has the ports and all the information that's gonna be required by the driver to connect to it. It also has a key space information in it, um, and then all the certificates so it can set up TLS. And that, this is the secure part of a secure bundle is that this stuff is all set up for you. If you had to do this manually, you would not wanna use this. But this connect bundle has everything all locked up for you so you have it ready to rock. And so from this point, I think it's a matter of just going out and giving it a try. If you have any questions, jump on over to community.datastacks.com. Let us know if you have any questions about how it runs, but otherwise go out there and try it, have fun with it, and maybe make something else. Add a couple of API calls for your own. Um, when you're done and you're, you're having fun with it, let us know. We would like to hear from you.